It's time for another Football Manager Rebuild and today we're heading into the Championship to try and restore glory to one of the most historic sides in English football, Leeds United. That's right, we'll be taking over as Leeds manager in FM24 and giving ourselves five years to try and take them not only back into the Prem but hopefully win some silverware along the way too. Obviously relegated last year from the Premier League, a few managerial changes, lots of Leeds fans not happy after Bielsa was sacked and then there was no real improvement with the new managers that came in but of course this is a side that expects so much with three Premier League wins in their history two Europa League or at least the equivalent of wins back in the day in that 70s period and also in 1975 runners up in the Champions League equivalent of that time. They're currently third in the championship table in real life but in FM we're predicted to go straight back up alongside Leicester and also Southampton and we've got some great players to build around in this championship team with Ilan Melier being one of our best in goal. Young Italian wonder kid Wilfred Nonto is also a brilliant youngster who will be hoping to get the best out of even if he has made it clear he wants to leave in real life and one of the stars of the season for Leeds at the minute is Somerville the young Dutch winger who can play on either side we also have some players with great potential like midfielder Archie Gray who was destined for big things and even Rutter who of course was signed by Leeds from Hoffenheim for quite a big fee whilst in the Premier League hasn't really had his chance just yet and we're going to try and give him that because he is clearly a player with a lot of potential and a Ability. But a lot of our best players aren't even at the club currently. Most of them have gone on loan because they didn't want to play in the championship. Lorente, Harrison, Rocca and Sinistera being some of our best that aren't here currently. So it won't be a simple job, but I really do think we've got a great chance of going up in our first or second season here. But before we get started with the transfers, with the rebuild, I'd like to ask you guys to do me a huge favour. It only takes a few seconds to do. It's completely free. If you could scroll down, hit that like button. I think you're an absolute legend if you did that. It really does help the video. Videos, YouTube thinks, wow, what a great video. Everyone's liking it and then it pushes it out to more people. So thank you to anyone who can do that. Don't forget as well, comment down below which rebuild you want to see next. Every rebuild we do comes from a suggestion from you guys. Leeds was given to us in the comments of our last rebuild with Ajax. So here we are rebuilding Leeds. If you're in the 70% plus percent of people watching these videos that aren't currently subscribed, I'd massively appreciate if you could hit that button. Just scroll down, check if you are subscribed. If you're not, click it, even if just a small portion of you did that we'd see a huge increase in subscriber numbers and you know if you don't end up liking the content you can change your mind and unsubscribe at any time and the last thing if you want to continue these rebuilds yourself if you want the save files from season one two three four and five they'll all be posted on my patreon which you can find linked in the description you can help support me as a creator and in return carry on these rebuilds yourself but let's get into the rebuild where our facilities are in a pretty good position our youth recruitment does need some work but financially we're pretty stable we've 71 million pounds in the balance and no real debts or loans. Now we've only got £1 million to spend this summer in the transfer window and 15000 in the wage budget because Leeds have done most of their business. So there's not too much we can do, but you know me, I love to make my transfers. So let's see what we can do in season one and then we can really kick on in season two, three, four and five. And with a few sales, we actually made enough cash to bring in a couple of players. I'll explain the reasons for selling them in a second. You might see we've got a new skin on here. This is a TCS skin for FM24. Let me know what you think of it. The attributes are a different color, but I do like the general look of the skin. Firstly, Jamie Shackleton has left to the Saudi Arabian divisions to play for Al Fateh. Now he was on loan at Millwall last year. We got £3 million just over for him. He had one year left on his deal. We weren't going to extend it. There was no future for him, so he's out the door. Kind of taken out of our hands, Fulham came in and poached one of our youngsters Matteo Joseph for 2.3 mil good profit from Leeds on a 900k investment but I would have maybe liked to have used him at some point Ian Perveda is another one where there wasn't much time left on his contract and I didn't see ourselves using him really going forward in this rebuild so instead of extending his deal we offered him out and we got 1.2 million pounds from Bristol City the sales didn't stop there though Daniel James was another one where I just didn't really see a future for him in our team I didn't really like his attributes and he was a seller by asset so we offered him out and Caligari came in for him 4.3 million pounds is what we received yes it's not much considering Leeds paid 25 mil for him but I think that was a stupid decision anyway to pay that much for Dan James either way we're saying goodbye you might think it's a bad decision now but hopefully over the course of the rebuild we'll be justified in our decisions another youngster that we lost in the transfer market against our will really was Darko Giabi he's gone to Sheffield United and we got two and a half million pounds for him so we identified a lot of those players whose contracts were running out that we could sell and then 
then we decided to bring a couple of players in. Nothing major. Firstly, it's Oscar Bob, all known from Manchester City. He's had a few appearances this year so far in real life for City, and he's coming in, the young Norwegian, to be an option on the wing and also in central midfield. And we signed a Uruguayan midfielder, Alan Rodriguez, who can also play on the wing from Argentinos Juniors. He cost us £4 million. He's a good player coming in as one of our best, and I think it's a great deal for a man with some incredible ability across the pitch. And we're going all out in this rebuild because I'm going for a 4-2-4 formation where I've actually kind of made it myself for once. I've moved the roles around. We're using an anchor in the midfield, which is Ethan Ampadu currently is our best in that position. The young Welshman signed from Chelsea. A lot of these players in this best 11 aren't currently at the club, but we also have Pirot up front, who I'm hoping to get the best out of, the Dutch striker. He's been great for Swansea over the last few years and Leeds paid £10 million for him this summer. But this is a very attacking formation where I'm hoping our team can score a lot of goals. And if we pick roughly our best 11 at the minute, it features the likes of Nonto, Rutter, Gray, Ampadu, who we've met, Alan Rodriguez as well. Pascal Stroik is a brilliant centre-back whose name I've definitely butchered the pronunciation of, who I'm hoping to get the best out of here, although there is some interest in him. But I think our transfer business is done for now. This is a team we're going to go with in the Championship, a pressing formation where we're going to try and outscore the opposition in most of our games, kind of like what Bielsa used to do. Lots of energy, lots of goals, but maybe not the best defence possible. Either way, though, we're ready to go for our first season. So let's see how we can get on in season one. And you know what? It's a performance that I'll certainly take from our lead side. Carabao Cup knocked out in the second round by Hull, forget about that. But the FA Cup, we made it all the way to the quarters, only knocked out by Liverpool, which is of course a team that would expect to beat us, to be honest. But we knocked out Man United on the way 3-2 in an extra time win. One of our rival clubs beaten, and I'm sure the fans would have absolutely loved that. But most importantly, we've been promoted. We're in the playoff final 5-2. I mentioned that we were going to try and outscore the opposition, and clearly we've done that. We finished in fourth place, 94 points points. Lots of teams close to each other. Ipswich, Norwich, Leeds, Southampton and Leicester. The other two relegated teams last year going up in those automatic promotion spots. We take this fourth place, a playoff win, and we'll be going into the Premier League. With 60 goal difference, we clearly scored a lot of goals. Yeah, there you go. 132 goals in the league season this year from Leeds, which is an incredible amount, but we obviously must have conceded quite a lot. Let's take a look at who our best performers were this year. Joel Perot scored 29, Nonto with 21, James Aidan Anthony, on loan from Bournemouth, contributed with 14 goals and Ruta finally made good on that initial fee paid to Hoffenheim with 24 league goals this year and 28 goals in all competitions. Somerville hit 12 as well. Gruyev, a Bulgarian midfielder, scored six goals for us on top of that. Jed Spence with five. It's been a great year all around. Lots of goals coming from lots of players and that bodes well for the future. We're now going into the Premier League season though with £50 million to spend and 400 grand in the wage budget, saying goodbye to some club legends as well. Players whose deals I could have potentially extended, but I want to go into a different direction with the club. And some of them didn't want to extend at all when they got the offers coming from Saudi Arabia, where all four of them are going. That's Stuart Dallas, Robin Koch, Liam Cooper, and Luke Ayling, losing all of them to the Saudi Arabian divisions, where they're going to be on mega wages, and it's very hard to convince them to stay. But 50 million is plenty for us to spend here. So let's see what we can do in the transfer window as we really start rebuilding our team in season two. Let's start with the sales. Our biggest sale of a window was American international Brendan Aronson, who I remember scoring a goal against Chelsea in real life. I'm a Chelsea fan. It was very disappointing when he did that, but he's been out on loan in the Bundesliga and did absolutely nothing. So when Leicester came in and offered 23 mil off their own backs, I just had to take it. I didn't see a future for him in our formation. We're getting most of our money back on that initial investment from Salzburg. And you know what? I just think we're going to have to take that on the chin. He could have been a good player for us, but I was happy to let him go. Go, and I'm not sure we'd ever get that kind of offer for him again. Junior Firpo has also left the club. He's gone to Saudi Arabia. I didn't intend to get rid of him. They just came forward and gave us a lot of money, 20 million. I know a lot of people have been saying it's kind of boring that Saudi Arabia buy so many players in these rebuilds. And I can kind of agree. It's a lot easier to get rid of some of these Deadwood players. Not that Firpo is, but yes, it is easier to sell players now that Saudi Arabia are here with their money. But you have to say it's very similar to real life. They spent so much money last summer, bought so many players in, 
and, and FM is reflective of that. They are spending a lot of money. They are buying these kind of players. So I think we've just got to accept it in the current world of football. But yes, Firpo is gone and that's 20 odd million pounds for the Dominican Republic 27 year old. This one is an interesting transfer. Patrick Bamford has left the club. He was complaining that he didn't play enough last year and it's hard to argue that he deserved it with Nonto, also Piro and Ruta scoring so many goals. Bamford only played 13 times last season combined with some injuries and the only team interested was a second division Bundesliga side, Nuremberg, who have given us about five mil for him. And you know what? I just took it because I thought, I don't think I'm going to use Bamford at all. I don't think he's got the ability anymore. As good as he was for Leeds, time is up on his career here. Sam Greenwood also leaves, didn't have too much left on his contract, wanted to be an important player when he definitely didn't deserve it. Played for Middlesbrough on loan last season and wasn't great. So we just took the cash for him, 4.3 mil from the Saudi teams. And finally, Glenn Kamara signed from Rangers, is a good player in FM, but just doesn't suit our tactics at all. And for that reason, we've let him go. 28 year old finishing international goes to Parma in Italy for 3.7 mil a slight loss on the 6 mil investment but look we got promoted and now it's time to change the team so that was about 60 million pounds bought in and we spent pretty much the same on the incomings firstly our new left back to replace Firpo again kind of taken out of our hands his sale but I think we've done well here 23 year old Turkish international Ridvan Yilmaz joins us from Rangers for 17 million pounds I think he's going to be a great player for his lots of ability and the scouts recommended him highly if you don't know we only sign players that the scouts recommend in these videos so I can't use my own knowledge in any way. I think this is a top signing, a real bargain. We have got a new backup left back as well and it's Sergio Gomez, the Spaniard from Manchester City who didn't play too much for them after signing from Anderlecht and we were able to get him on the transfer list for 2.9 million. A bargain deal for a player that had a lot of promise particularly at youth age for Spain and I think we could still get something out of him here here at Leeds. Another Man City player joining us, Taylor Harwood Bellis comes in on loan, the 22 year old English centre-back was out on loan at Burnley got them promoted then was out on loan at Southampton got them promoted now he's coming into the Premier League for the first time really to play for us here at Leeds and if he does well enough he could be someone that we eventually try and sign because he only has one year left on his contract our biggest signing of the summer was Portuguese 23 year old Samu who joins us from Mallorca in Spain they signed him for 2.6 mil he was great for them again we wanted someone in those defensive midfield roles and our scouts recommended him so we went for him 21 million pounds was the fee. I think he looks like a great talent and he's definitely going to come in as one of our best midfielders. We've got some extra depth on the wing by signing Facundo Buonante from Brighton. He didn't get much of a chance there, was on the transfer list and a young Argentinian joins us for six million pounds or so. And one for the future, we have signed Colombian Yasser Asparilla from Watford, who was great for them last year. We paid 12 million pounds for him and then loaned him straight back out to Watford for the season. I don't think we'll play him this year, so I thought best for him to play at a club that he knows and then next season he can come in after some more development and really challenge for a first team place. And a lot of players have returned from loan too. Obviously Jack Harrison is now back at the club. Luis Sinistera as well. A lot of these players still asking to leave by the way. Nonto being one of them. Jack Harrison being another saying they want to leave when a certain fee comes in. Mark Rocker is back as well. Archie Gray has been developing a lot in the midfield for us. Played a good chunk of the games last year and continues to develop so that's great. But our best 11 is looking very talented now. Christensen is back as as well from loan a Danish right back who comes in as one of our best was at Roma last year and played loads for them so clearly a talented player and this is the 11 we're going for we're still sticking with our aggressive attacking formation and hopefully we'll bear some fruits of our labor in the Premier League in our first season and you know what? I will absolutely take this. Carabao Cup quarterfinal exit to Luton, whatever. FA Cup, fifth round exit to Forest. Not bothered. The main thing is that we stayed in the Premier League and we did it by a comfortable margin. We didn't just get 40 points. We got 61 points, way clear of the relegated teams with 27. And we were actually only five points away from Man City in a Europa League spot. Very close between us, Newcastle, Man United, Tottenham and West Ham. Chelsea eventually going on to be champions of the Premier League. But 61 points is great. 17 wins, 11 losses and 10 draws. We scored 67 goals, the ninth best in the Premier League this year and we also only conceded 54 so clearly our improved defence has helped us out there with the likes of Christensen coming back from loan. Samu was a star of the show having signed for big money he repaid our faith with a 7 average match rate in 11 goals and 3 assists in that midfield. Rutter continued to score goals for his chipping in with 15 in the Premier League this year so he's really starting to repay the faith that Lee showed in him when they bought him 
captain from Hoffenheim. Nonto scored 10 goals in all comps, seven in the Premier League and continues to develop up front. And Archie Gray really continued his development this year, classed as a wonder kid now at 19, played 33 times in the Prem and didn't look out of place, which is great to say for such a young player. And going into our next season now, we're going to have 50 million pounds to spend, 140,000 in the wage budget and finances are looking great still. We've upgraded some of the facilities along the way, increased our reputation and hopefully if we continue this growth, we can push for a European spot next summer. Don't worry, this is the last time I'll ask, but if you are enjoying the video, make sure you smash that like button for us and let's see who we've bought in in our third transfer window. Not many crazy sales this year. The first one, though, was Mark Rocco, who played quite a lot for us last year, but has gone to the Bundesliga to play for Hertha for 20 mil. Quite unfortunate of a sale, really. Somerville, who was great for us in the championship, didn't really take the step up into the Prem very well. With Sinistera being back in the team and whatnot, there was no real place. Buenante as well and Asparilla coming in this season. It made sense for Somerville to go. Go. Saudi Arabia came in 7.5 mil we make a profit on the initial investment from Feyenoord but he really could have gone far in a Leeds shirt so it's unfortunate that it didn't work out for him in the Prem and we also say goodbye to Joe Gelhart who was just falling down the pecking order despite being a promising young striker we sold him to Mallorca and then they said you know what do you want him back for the year on loan for free and I wasn't going to reject that even if we never use him we're paying no money for him for the season we get 3.6 million in the door awful business from Mallorca to give him straight back to us but we'll take it and Diego Lorente has left to join Italian side Sassuolo, playing 19 times for his last year, 9 starts, 10 substitute appearances. We make 2.6 mil for him as his contract began to run out. Gruyev has also left for just over 1 mil. And Alan Rodriguez, the transfer that didn't really work out for us, has gone to Getafe for 1 million. Was good for us in the championship, but in the Prem did not play at all. So we cut our losses, took our money back. Would I say it's a failed transfer? Not really. He cost us £3 million in excess there and he helped us get promoted. So it is what it is. As planned, we've bought in Taylor Harwood Bellis after his great loan for his last season. He's got England international appearances now. A great young centre back who we're hoping will take us very far. To get an England international for free is a great deal. We've signed a new backup goalkeeper as well, Brazilian Andrew joining us, who is a player with a lot of ability and a lot of potential too, joining from the Portuguese divisions for seven and a half mil. Lorente is replaced at centre back by Thomas Araujo, a 23 year old Portuguese national coming in from Benfica after a great year for them for 17.25 million. Our strike four is boosted by the signing of Gabriel Barbosa from Chelsea who signed him for 24 million from Flamengo never used him we've paid 18 million for him and he is a striker with a lot of experience to help our younger forwards in this team and finally our best signing of the summer a leading Premier League player supposedly is Estanis Pedrola a 21 year old Spaniard joining us from Sampdoria where he was exceptional in Serie B we have paid 14 million pounds from the former Barcelona player and he looks like he's going to be a top talent on the left side of the pitch and our best 11 is looking very strong now. We've got Melier, Christensen, Harwood, Bellis, Stroik and Yilmaz as before. Archie Gray and Samu as they both continue their development in midfield. Some young players like Asperilla and Pedrola making the first team. Asperilla last year at Watford was again pretty good and comes in as one of our best options on the wing. Nonto up front with Barbosa with some great talent on the bench. The likes of Puro, Woba, Harrison, Arruyo, Redondo who actually I don't think we covered did we? We signed him this summer as well just to mention. I can't believe I forgot about him. An Argentinian, 22-year-old, very highly thought of in real life, joins us from Argentinos Juniors where he's been great. 5.25 mil is not a huge fee for a player that's now valued at 30 mil. But yes, it's a team with a lot of talent. We predicted a 10th place finish. If we get that again, I'll be very happy, but I'd love to continue our push up the Premier League. So let's see how we do in season three. And it is an exceptional performance from our lead side. The cup competitions, we exit at very early opportunities. But the Premier League, we were close to getting a European place last year. This time, we have smashed it, finishing fourth behind only Newcastle, two points ahead of us, City and Chelsea, who yet again win the Premier League title. We finished above Arsenal, Man U, Brighton, Tottenham, Liverpool, West Ham in a great season with only seven losses, 11 draws and 20 wins. A great year from our young side that continues to get better and better. Let's have a look who our best performers were. And of course, that means we'll be in the Champions League next summer. Non 
Toronto got 15 goals for us in a great season. Looks like he's settled at the club a bit more now, not as unhappy about being here as he used to be, but is now wanted by the likes of Aston Villa and Tottenham. A great season for him up front. Pedrola had a brilliant first year, getting 13 goals and five assists in the Prem. And then it's the usual suspect, Samu Christensen, Stroik, Sinistera, Archie Gray, continuing to be a top level midfielder for us. Now has an England international appearance as well, which is great to see for the 20 year old. He's asking for a new deal and he definitely deserves it. And Barbosa came straight into our team, used that experience to bag us 17 goals, three of them from the penalty spot with nine assists as well. Definitely worth that 20 million pound or so investment on him. And this team has been exceptional this year. It's giving us 54 million to spend next summer, 180 grand in the wage budget to continue improving what is now a Champions League side. And obviously being in the Champions League is going to mean we've got to sign some top talent in this team. So let's see what we can do in season four's transfer window. As Anakin Skywalker once said, this is where the fun begins because we have sold 150 million pounds of players and spent pretty much the same amount on incoming. So this is where it gets really fun. The first sale kind of taken out of our hands, to be honest. Wilfred Nonto goes to Real Madrid for just over 50 mil. The problem with him was he had a year or so or maybe two years left on his deal and showed no signs of wanting to negotiate because of the interest shown in him. Now, I didn't think that interest was going to go. Barca and Real both bid him for him. He wanted to go Real. He's gone ahead drawing for 51 mil, potentially rising to 58. Yes, we do lose him, but for a player with so little time left on his deal, I think it made sense to let him go. Ilan Melier also leaves the club, one of our other best players now, the France international goalkeeper. He's gone to join Al Ali, one of the best sides in Saudi Arabia for 45 mil, potentially rising to 50. Look, when you get offered that money for your keeper, you kind of have to take it, particularly when he really wants to go as well. And you can see why he would, because they've given him 625 grand a week to play over there. Luis Sinistera has also left. He didn't play much for his last season. He's also joined Al Ali. He played four times as a starter, 14 times as a sub. So to get 35 and a half mil for him, I think that's good business. Joel Perot has also gone to Saudi for 10 million pounds. Hasn't really played too much for us over the last year or two, particularly last season, only playing twice off the bench. 10 million ain't a bad fee for a player who hasn't played that much. And Maximilian Wober, the 28-year-old Austrian, formerly of Salzburg, has joined Celta Vigo for 4.7 mil. And of course, we went crazy in the window, having been given all that money, plus the 50 million we had to spend anyway. Firstly, Umar Soleil, the French centre-back, joins us from RB Salzburg after three incredible seasons for them. 18.25 mil is a great deal for a guy who's going to be an elite level player for us, I'm sure. We make 50 million pounds from Melier, and we spend only 13 million or so on our new goalkeeper, Martin van der Voor, the Belgian 24-year-old joining us from RB Leipzig, where he's been pretty decent over the last few years and definitely suits the sweeper-keeper style that we're trying to play here. We have a new starting left-back as well, Miguel Gutierrez, the Spaniard, joins Pedrola as a Spanish player on the left-hand side, 25 years of age, £30 million from Girona, where he's been very good for them. I think it's a good bit of business for a player that comes in as one of the best left-backs, maybe even in world football currently. And then our big signing of the summer, we lose Nonto, we need needed to fill those goals up front, so we have gone all out to sign 21-year-old Irishman Evan Ferguson from Brighton. He had a great year last time with 17 goals. We'll be hoping he can continue to score goals for us over the next few years to pay back what is a record-breaking fee of 80 mil rising to 85 with add-ons included. A physical specimen with great ability in the air, finishing ability, long shots, passing, technique, a modern-day complete forward, and I think he really completes this team. Yes, it's a lot of money, but I think he's going to be worth it because our best 11 now looks absolutely stacked with Van der Voort in goal, Christensen at the back alongside Sole, Stroik, Gutierrez, Gray, Samu Asparilla, Pedrola, Ferguson and Barbosa. I believe Gray has been at the World Cup recently as well so good on him now getting called up for the England national team but let's see how this team can get on in our fourth season, our penultimate season, season four. And you know what? I think this is a good account for ourselves, considering we were playing in European football as well this year. We finished sixth in the league in a Europa League spot behind Everton, United, Chelsea, Liverpool and title winners Arsenal. City all the way in ninth under new manager Louis Enrique as well. So clearly Pep's been sacked. But yes, yeah, 67 points, 11 losses, 7 draws. Not bad whatsoever whilst playing in the Champions League where we got all the way to the round of 16. Let's have a look how we did. League phase finished in 11th place, winning 5 matches. All winnable games to be fair against Feyenoord, Fenerbahce, 
Antwerp, Salzburg and Hadrick split. We lost three to Milan, Dortmund and City, the teams you'd expect us to lose to. We then went into the knockout playoff round where we took out Marseille in a 4-1 victory and then PSG proved too much for us, beating us 5-1. But I'm sure Leeds fans would have been happy with that. A great away day in Paris, another European finish. We're doing a great job considering they're in the championship in real life. We'll be going in to our last season in European football. We'll also have 58 million to spend and 100 grand of wage budget. But let's see who were our top performers this year. Barbosa comes in with 23 goals, Ferguson with 25, Pedrola with 14, Asperilla with 9, Ruta still chipping in with 12 goals. This team is on fire on all fronts and we've got so many players playing at a high level for us here. We've got a great set of talent on the bench and in our starting 11 and hopefully it will lead to big things in season 5. So let's see what we can do with that cash in our final season. And it's another mad summer, £150 million in sales, about the same spent on incomings too, so let's get into it. Firstly, our new goalkeeper, Martin van der Voort, has already said goodbye to us, signing for Al Halal in the Saudi Arabian divisions for 51 mil. Wouldn't have chosen to get rid of him, to be honest, but when you're offered 51 mil on a player you signed a year ago for 13, you have to take that deal. Thomas Araujo has been a good servant for us at centre-back, but now at the age of 25, he's gone to join Juventus for 27 million, having signed for 17, it's a £10 million price profit on a man that wasn't playing too much for us. Speaking of great servants, Ruta has now left to join Al Fahta in the Saudi Arabian divisions for 20 mil. This guy's been scoring goals for fun. He hasn't really played so well in the Prem over the last few years, but he's been a great servant, a great player, and we'll say goodbye to him and thank him for his service after that signing from Hoffenheim. It looks like at first it hadn't worked out for Leeds. Ampadu leaves for 10 million to go join Fenerbahce, having not played as much for us over the last few years. He was upset, and maybe rightly so. Ridvan Yilmaz has joined Turkey side Besiktas going back to his original club for 6.75 mil and finally Sergio Gomez didn't really work out for us as left to join Las Palmas for 500k we lose 2.5 mil overall on the initial transfer but he paid over 30 times for us in the Premier League which is more than good enough for the fee we paid and then we get into the incomings where things get really fun Jack Grealish joins us on a free transfer of all things from Manchester City where he was playing fairly regularly still obviously though City are below us in the league now so maybe he'd had enough he wanted to play for a team in Europe and Grealish is here now in a lead shirt. Gedson Fernandez, classed as a world-class midfielder even though he's only considered two and a half stars has joined us again on a free transfer. 28-year-old, two international appearances for Portugal. He comes in from Besiktas where he's been okay over the last few years and will add to our midfield depth. And our final free transfer was Roger Ibanez joining us from the Saudi Arabian divisions on a free after his contract was up after some great seasons there. A top level centre back who to get for no fee at all is an incredible bit of business. If you want to go over to my Patreon and continue this rebuild, you'll be blessed by having a Japanese 19 year old wonder kid centre back by the name of Yoshio Hashimoto who already looks like a great player and is going to get better yet. We've signed him for 5 mil to add some depth in the team and also give us some players for the future. Kyle Walker-Peters has been signed for just over 10 mil to give us some depth on either flank from Southampton. It's a bit of money, to be honest, for a 30-year-old, 11 mil, but I think it makes sense. Gives us depth in both areas and doesn't break the bank. Philip Jorgensen is coming in as our new goalkeeper as well. He signed for most of the money that we got from Van der Voort. The Villarreal goalkeeper signs for 41 mil, having been the Sweden's international goalkeeper for the last few years. A great talent who's heading into his prime now and is going to be an unbelievable keeper for us, I'm sure. And we have a new talisman up front to go alongside Barbosa and Eva Ferguson. It's Elio Wahi joining us from Len after four great seasons for them, scoring lots of goals. 42 mil, potentially rising to 47. Seems like a lot, but I think he is a killer striker and he's going to be great for us. Our best 11 to finish off now in our final season is this. Jorgensen in goal with Christensen, Harwood Bellis, Ibanez, Gutierrez, Archie Gray, Samu, Aspirilla, Pedrola, Ferguson and Wahi. We're ready to go. The club is getting better and better over the years as well in terms of the facilities and our reputation. And hopefully we can get some silverware in our final year. Let's see what we can do with this side that I think could actually compete in the Europa League at a high level now. And we have done exactly that. The Carabao Cup, we never got near winning, but we've won the FA Cup, beating West Ham in the final 2-1. We also beat Palace along the way. Quarter final, we took out Man City in a great win. Hopefully Jack Grealish scored there and we beat Bristol Rovers as well. So we've delivered our first bit of silverware. The FA Cup is ours. And on top of that, we have won a European competition, beating Brentford 2-0 in the Europa League final. To get there, we knocked out Galatasaray 9-3 on aggregate. And I believe there is some beef between Leeds and Galatasaray. 
So that would have been a great game there. We beat Villarreal 4-1 in the quarterfinal. The round of 16, we took out PSV Eindhoven. We have smashed it here. Never looked like losing, really. In the league phase, we finished sixth. Didn't lose a single game. Drew twice. A great performance from us across the competition. We'll watch that game in a second, but let's see who we have to thank for it. Elia Wahi getting 35 goals. Ferguson with 36. Asperilla with 10. And Pedrola with 18. All of these players making up for the big transfer fees we paid for them. Becoming top-level talents now. World-class forward. Evan Ferguson, this is now, by the way. Five-star ability player. And Wahi's been great as well, as mentioned. Some great performances all around. Barbosa still getting 16 goals. Samu has been an unreal servant since signing for us in the Premier League. Well done to him. But let's check out this Europa League final where in the 14th minute we play a crossing and Soleil rises highest to the ball, nodding it past Raya in Brentford's net. That gave us the advantage. Then we went all the way into the 87th minute before we got our next. Grealish playing it around with Gutierrez. Back to Grealish who's going to pull it back and finds Gabby Gol, Gabriel Barbosa in the middle of the goal to tap it in for the winner. So it's been an incredible season for us. A great run of form towards the end of the year as well. And this has been a great rebuild. Leeds in the championship right now. They're now Europa League winners, FA Cup winners, and they'll be once again going into the Champions League. So that has been an exceptional performance. Let me know who you want to see rebuilt next down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.